It's got a lower capex, so just over a billion dollars. And then at 350 copper, the NPV is just over a billion dollars as well. So it's nice to have those numbers matching at, at current very, you know, what people are considering fairly conservative long-term copper prices now. And then at 450 copper, the NPV jumps up to 1.8 billion. So that's also very happy to see that. Hello, welcome to ASA TV. Today, I'm delighted to be joined once again by Joanne Fries, who is the president and CEO of Candente Copper. Uh, Joanne, great to see you again. You've had some, some news out since we last uh, spoke, the PEA on your Can Yariaco Norte project there in Peru. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the highlights that this PEA has um, brought out. Okay, great. So for financial highlights, it's got a lower capex, so just over a billion dollars. And then at 350 copper, the NPV is just over a billion dollars as well. So it's nice to have those numbers matching at, at current very, you know, what people are considering fairly conservative long-term copper prices now. And then at 450 copper, the NPV jumps up to 1.8 billion. So that's also very happy to see that. Uh, so in terms of, you know, production uh, on the project, what are, what are you project, projecting there? Right. Well, for the first six years, while we're just at 40,000 tons per day throughput, it's 120 million pounds of copper or 54,500 tons. And with that, 24,375 ounces of gold and 548,700 um, ounces of silver. That's the first six years. And then we, we go up to um, 193 million pounds with 34,000 ounces of gold and 766 silver average mine life is 173 million pounds of copper so it's pretty nice for um the, the size we're at yeah absolutely um and, and and as you mentioned there i mean the plan is to to do a sort of initial phase and then to use that cash flow from that initial production to to then ramp up to an expanded expanded project yeah yes and using 350 copper that would happen at, on year seven but if if we had current copper prices that'll happen after year four Mm, absolutely. And I mean, I think that's worth going into a little bit, the sort of sensitivity analysis you've done. Um, you've fairly conservative um, prices you've used for the, for the PEA, yeah? What, 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 tell, tell us a little bit about, about, about the prices you've used and, and, and the long-term outlook with copper obviously being in high demand at the moment and, you know, people talking about inflation uh, risk, you know, and the price of gold and silver. Yeah, we do get a lot of questions and people commenting that we used very, we and Osenko used very conservative prices. We don't really think so in that we want, you want to be conservative for long term. You want to know the lowest price of copper that your project really looks good at or, or works very well. And that, that proved us very well, you know, back in 2011 when we used 250 copper for the larger size project. So using 350 is a base case and it looks great at that and I'm very happy to have um, NPV matching the capex using an eight percent um, discount and after tax, of course. But then current, you know, getting your NPV or NPV up to one point eight billion, and IR twenty two percent, and then five dollar copper. And of course, lots of people are talking, you know, predicting six dollar six fifty copper now, which we don't have sensitivities up to, but people can do the math and you can see what happens with every fifty cents. Um, change in the price of copper, you know, how much things um, expand for us or grow. So, mm, Absolutely. I mean, what, you know, when it comes to building these things, you want to have a little bit left in the in, in the tank. Yeah. Uh, in terms of your sort of you know, keeping, keeping the numbers conservative. Um, yes. Talking about um, that, you, you know, your, your capex, uh, you, you mentioned you've lowered your capex uh, from, from previous from previous studies. Can you remind our viewers how you've gone about doing that? Yes, well, we're instead of starting big, which earlier studies started at 95,000 tons per day. And when we were in um, the earlier feasibility studies up to 2014, we actually looked at a, a throughput of up to 110,000 tons per day. The resource will support that. And I don't have any, any economic numbers based on that, of course, because the new PEA focused on smaller. But what we wanted was to have a capex closer to a billion dollars for a company like us and, and, and any mid-sized producer to be able to get into production with such a serious copper producer for around a billion dollars and then ramp up once you've, you've got cash flow. 
gives you a lot of advantages because it really opens the doors for the number of people that can build this by themselves, but also just financing. And, and one, for instance, is Peruvian pension funds. When we talk to them, they're happier to know they could be, you know, um, putting up as much as maybe half of the capex, and and that's not today, but you know, a year from now when it would be ready for those discussions. Um, so that that's really helped us. So the idea is start at forty thousand, and once as it pay back, and as I say, at current copper prices, that would be in four years, um, and then you just do it out of cash flow. So, you know, you're, it's not such a huge um, financing in the beginning. Um, another part of the of the PEA uh, that sort of stands out is is uh, sort of your high uh, ESG standards that you're looking to achieve with the project. Um, tell us a little bit about what you've done to improve the ESG sort of footprint of, of, of the project. Yes, thank you for that. And that was a big focus because one thing was was dollars and costs, but ESG has been on our mind for a long time. So the first thing we wanted to do was mitigate the need for a roaster, which was introduced. Um, in 2011 and, and when we knew that Codelco was going to be commissioning the same Autotech roaster and it would take care of all the arsenic. But what we did in the desktop study with Asenko and then carried through in the PEA is geometallurgical modeling and discovered that the arsenic is has different levels in the eight different rock types today as it, as it was deposited, but also it reports to the con differently. So not only um, have, we, have we discovered that we, we go from 85% of the arsenic in the rock reporting to the con down to 35, but we also know that we can do in-pit blending because we understand the controls of the arsenic better. And so with that, with, with no roast or no treatment whatsoever, we get down to 0.49% arsenic in the first six years and 0.52 life of mine. And arsenic penalties really don't kick in until after the, the the 0.5 percent but even at that they don't get um, too heavy until over one one or one and a half so mm. and you've also done some work around the tailings as well i believe correct sorry about that yes yeah, so so the first thing on the esg for us was was looking at the arsenic situation and mitigating the need for roaster after that we also looked at the infrastructure layout so we've taken away what was wet tailings and and um, waste separately and actually co-mingling and co-placing in the same waste management facility, but also it's going to be dry. So the tailings will get filtered and they'll get mixed with some of the waste. So you'll have a more a dry mass and you'll have different layers of it, but it'll be in, in one containment. So that actually lowers the footprint, but also being dry, it's a much more stable um, facility. Absolutely. Um, and so what are the next steps in terms of sort of moving the project forward uh, towards a, a potential sort of PSF or, or DSF? Well, we're waiting for the final report to be out and that's in a couple of weeks. And then once once we get that and everybody can digest the details of over, I'm sure, over 200 page, page report, then we'll be launching straight into feasibility, we believe. So we're just talking to Asenko and a few other engineering firms about that now. And um, but that's the idea is to launch straight into feasibility. And, mm. and so when you say straight into, and when would you, when would you hope to get started on that? Uh, within a month or two. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and so in terms of, um, just, just to remind us, uh, the, 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 the OPEX on this project, um, how's that, how is that looking? Oh, it's uh, one point, dollar twenty eight. So it's very low C1 cash cost. Yeah. A dollar twenty-eight. I mean, our, our viewers will, will appreciate the fact that you've, you've put out a lot of numbers there. So we'll, we'll be sure to put up some uh, some some slides throughout this, so so that people can uh, sort of digest those uh, at leisure. Um, but um, you know, congratulations on getting the PEA out, and and good luck um, moving forward to uh, DSF and PSF. Um, thank you very much for joining us today, Joanne Fries, Kanban Copper. Thank you very much.